the microbes are able to use the same system that green plants use to capture that CO2 and use that carbon as a building block. But instead of using sunlight energy, they use energy from hydrogen. Today's carbon dioxide levels have reached heights never seen before in human existence. At the same time, aquaculture production has more than doubled every year since the year 2000, requiring 400 billion fish from already overfished stocks to be blended with grain in order to meet the needs of fish farms. But now there's a way to turn the tide on both problems at the same time. I'm Mark Dew in Sunnyvale in the heart of California's Silicon Valley. The experimental science is happening at a company called Novo Nutrients. David Say is the CEO. Well, we're going to look at our sort of our mascots, which are these uh, small shrimp-like creatures that are called alternatively brine shrimp or artemia. Um, and they go by different brands. Probably the most famous brand is sea monkeys. But what we have here yeah, actually... These are from, uh, these children's are children's pets. These, exactly. Like you, you can order things like these from the back of a comic book, I think, still to this day. We're not feeding them the off the shelf feed that usually comes with them as a part of a package. Instead, we're giving them our prototype protein meal product. This is what the brine shrimp are getting a specially designed mix of 13 species of microbes, known as chemoautotrophs, or single celled organisms, which feed on chemicals such as CO2. Under the right conditions, such as those provided by a Novo Nutrients bioreactor, they convert CO2 and hydrogen into more and more copies of themselves, just as a tree uses CO2 and water to make the cellulose and protein it needs to grow. Hey there, Mark. Nice. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice what to you meet you. What you got going on here? Oh, I'm just uh, spinning down some cells that I uh, grew in this bioreactor over here. Founder Brian Sefton is the man who came up with the idea to capture carbon gases, feed them to lab-grown microbes that become protein to be fed to fish. Right here is an electrolyzer. So what this does is it takes water and it splits that water into hydrogen and oxygen. And we, we do this because in the laboratory, we don't like to store large amounts of hydrogen um, because hydrogen is flammable and can be explosive. So this produces hydrogen on demand. Over here, we're just doing two small scale experiments with gas fermentation that are right here. And these are very small, uh, small flasks that we're growing microbes in on a small scale to prepare for other, or to other experiments or to test. But the gas is going in here and the, the hydrogen is being produced on demand by that electrolyzer from, uh, from electricity, using electricity as the power. And over here, we have, uh, these are tanks of carbon dioxide. We add a little bit of oxygen to it because these are aerobic organisms and that helps them get more energy out of the hydrogen. And that's the way our process works. Explain to me how hydrogen fits in. Uh, living things are mainly made up of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, okay? But in the case of a green plant, for example, the green plant uses sunlight energy to capture the CO2 and split that carbon off and let the oxygen go and make the proteins, fats, and all the parts of the plant, right? And in our case, what happens is the microbes are able to use the same system that green plants use to capture that CO2 and use that carbon as a building block. But instead of using sunlight energy, they use energy from hydrogen. So yeah, a very important part of growing microbes is uh, culturing them. And this, for example, you can see two different microbe strains here. This one is a, another carotenoid producing microbe that is very, very orange uh, in color. This one is producing a red fluorescence uh, protein. In other cases... As chief technology officer, Brian is continually mixing and growing things in order to find the right nutritional formula. One of the company's bioreactors is currently in the process of producing a brand new concoction. So what is that inside there? So this is one of our bioreactors. What I'm growing inside here is a bacteria. It's very, very orange colored. And that orange color is actually, you, know, you might say it looks like carrots, 
that's uh, carotenoids, which are an ex essential part of uh, nutrition for humans and for, for fish as well. And in fact, carotenoids are what give salmon its pink color. Now, are you growing this to become part of the fish food? I, I'm growing this to become a, a nutrition product and potentially to be used in the fish food. This is what it looks like when it comes out. It has a nice head on it like beer. When Brian puts it under a microscope, you can see what's going on inside. Nutritional value also boosts monetary value. The carotenoid is worth the, the pure chemical. It can be worth two to eight million dollars a ton. But of course, this is only a small percentage of this. How good of a level can you get, right? And that's why, like I was saying, this is significant because it's so orange. Eventually, the microbes can be turned into a powder or a paste. I could taste this, actually. Yeah, I wouldn't do it, though. <laughs> it wouldn't be unhealthy, though, right? No, it wouldn't be unhealthy, <laughs> but it would probably be very bitter. Can you describe what a fish likes, what you found, or is that a secret? <laughs> well, to some extent, it is a secret, because these are attractants. And attractants are a very, very valuable area of formulating uh, uh, aquafeed diets. Novonutrients is more focused on growing a protein meal that other companies can mix with their own feed. They've already experimented with feeding their protein meal to trout, which had near equivalent growth and survival rates to trout that consumed ordinary feed. So far, Novo Nutrients has made their feed from carbon gases shipped to them from power plants and oil and gas companies. They've also used their own mobile lab to capture emissions directly from cement plants. Between now and the next couple decades, the total amount of aquaculture feed that will need to be produced could increase by 100 million tons a year. And where is the high quality protein gonna come from? Because you can't catch more fish to feed to fish. And there are many technical solutions, but few of them are economical. Something that's an inexpensive enough way to produce these proteins that can compete with catching fish before there's a real crisis and there just is not enough material to go around. Do you envision catching the CO2, you know, feeding it to your bacteria and growing food for humans someday? Yes, we think that it's a, the biggest challenge actually in many ways is consumer perception. We want people to be ready to embrace bacteria before we start trying to sell it to them. And so I think that the right path is for people to get used to things like the Beyond Burger or Impossible Meat. Right, things that are much more meat-like, but come from slightly novel sources. And so we think that you start with animals because fish, as long as it tastes good, they're gonna eat it, and then get to humans later, especially after that market has expanded. Today, it's still relatively small, but it's gonna be a multi-billion dollar, multi-hundred billion dollar market for uh, plant-based meats, and, and those can be our future customers. So much ingenuity in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.